this is definitely a worth a purchase. Now I'm gonna leave a link in the description. I'll probably put a link right here. Yeah, I'm gonna put a link right there. Do, 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 do. Right, so these, well I think I may be the only person in the country that actually has these to show as a review of first. On Amazon, there's only two cases left which I've got a case on the left hand side which you're going to see in a minute and there is only a couple of fans on Amazon also this is a controller I've seen a controller on eBay I'll probably leave a link in the description but I don't know where you can actually buy it yet because it's only just come out it's a new company called Sahara which all the information is going to be there but to be honest with you it's a bit like Inwin when Inwin first started out and didn't know who they were and they brought out some really really freaking nice cases really decent glass tempered sides and like um, like thumb screws that are intact um, like a nice uh, cut out for the back everything was just all chambered off in the Inwin cases like they were sick. This case is going to be showing you, we're going to be testing it, um, but overall we're just going to be doing a proper review and in depth about everything about the case and like quality control and everything like that, quality control of fans. I'm going to show you the RGB fans first and then probably in the next video I'll probably put a build in it because it's definitely worth doing. Now let me tell you the price quickly. So each fan is $4.99 on Amazon, $4.99 for RGB. Don't get this wrong, this is better than Antec or, uh, well put it this way, it's probably better than most RGB fans out there. And I'm talking about all the top quality ones. I'm not going to mention too many names, but when you see this video, you're going to be like, wow, okay, I'm going to go and purchase this. Five pound, that's nothing. Well, the controller was about $7.99 on eBay, but I don't know where else you can get the controller from. But I'm going to find out all the relevant information from the people that sent me this, like all this stuff, and then you're going to be quite happy. The case is uh, on offer, I think, at 60 or 70 quid at the moment, but it's got a glass front and a glass side at the moment. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about this. So these are the new in things. RGB, everyone loves RGB, but RGB is freaking expensive. Not this one, it's not expensive. This is five pound, I've already tested it. I had to come back and I was looking at these videos, which at the end of this video, you're gonna be able to do, and then I'm gonna be building a website blog just to talk about this and show you in depth of what you can do with each different cycle of color changing and what you can do with it. And it's all in the dark and it's all nice and pre presented, uh, presented, I should say. And then you're going to be like, wow. Okay. So let me get the box open because I know I've been talking for ages, but it's definitely worth doing. So if I get this out quickly, I tried this out on Saturday when I weren't meant to be at work. And I thought, I'll just come in and check this out because I didn't believe what I was looking at before. I thought, mm. like all these other companies that put it RGBs up, except for Thermal Tape, Corsair, um, who else is there? NZXT and another company. Their RGBs are spot on. Any other RGBs, it's like it's fake. When you look at the pictures, they just don't look like realistic. And then when you look at pictures, you think, oh, well, I get it. It's going to be like that, and it's not. I hate that. So when I got these videos sent to me, I thought, nah. So I thought, do you know what? These fans must be about 20 quid. So I went and had a look, five pound. And I'm like, five pound? That does not make any sense whatsoever. So I've literally took my whole uh, one of these computers apart and I plugged it in and to my surprise I could not flip and believe how good these were. The amount of LEDs are in it, the amount of RGBs, the amount of stuff you oh my god. I'm just gonna have to show you. But look at the size of that cable, right? That is you've got about 40 centimeters of cable there, and then you've got these special plugs to plug into this controller, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. It's got a remote control and everything. So it's all frosted and the bearings on the fan as well. It is just super clean and I turned this up to maximum speed in the computer and I couldn't really even hear it. And I was like, oh, maybe the wind ain't pushing like forward, like air pressure. No, the air pressure was sick. It was still going. It was flowing to a nice, de decent distance. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, fully black, no like crappy, like anything on it. It was just proper nice. It's got absorption on the sides, on both sides, and it also comes with the screws as well. But you know like the cross thread screws that you want to screw it to the back of like the old school stuff, but you can just change the screws. I highly uh, recommend Sahara if they've got enough money, like five pounds like for an RGB. You just, we'll get there in a minute. But anyway, if they add some screws in there and there's a little bit more profit left over, if they can actually put this in. I can see inside the actual fans though itself, it's got RGB, like you know like the uh, LED uh, 
uh, RG, uh, yeah, RGB LED strips. The little bits that are in there looks like it's on top of there. And it looks like there's quite a lot. There's like three, six, there's 12 RGB lights on there and it's in the frosted design. The fins are really nice. It looks like it can push a lot of air. I felt it, felt it push a lot of air. It looks really nice as a design. The cable's wrapped really nicely and it's got a connector. Right, so that's just one of the fans. And then you get like, it's nicely packaged as well. Make sure the fan doesn't break. So I've had a few fans that have broken before. Not from this company, not from any other company other than, and not a company that I'm not gonna reckon, well, not gonna talk about. But yeah, their fans broke on arrival. These fans become like really like sturdy. Look at, look how thick that is, come on, man. So you've got your screws and that, it comes with four screws, a nice little bit of packaging. Let's talk about the fan really quickly. I'm just going to read off the box because I'm more interested in showing you what it actually does. Like the specifications and the dimensions I know really does work really well. So this is a 120 by 120mm fan. You probably could use it as a radiator as well. I'm going to test that in a later future uh, video. The bearing types, hyper bearing, rated voltage fans, a DC 12 volt, LED, D, uh, DV 5 volt. Rated voltage is uh, CD 5.0, 13.8 volts. Start voltage is DC 5 volts on and off. Uh, Reddit and current, oh sorry, not Reddit. I mean, uh, rated current fan is 160 milliamps and LED 600 milliamps. Uh, locked current less than 220 milliamps. Rated speed of 1200 um, RPM speeds over 10%. Airflow is 38 over um, CFM, air pressure is 1.1 millimeters H2O. H2O, we got we got a bit of water in the air. Anyway, noise level is 23.5 decibels. This product must be paired with the Pirate Turbo controller. And uh, we'll get to that now. But anyway, what you see on there is what you get in there for real life. But what you see on here, you can do a lot more in real life. But I'm gonna show you. So it says 55 color settings and everything. But then we've got the controller box as well, which I saw on eBay for around seven to eight pound. And it comes with a remote control. So I'm just gonna get this all out of the box real quick. So it's got some screws there. You got like Velcro, um, not velcro oh it is velcro so basically they even include a velcro a sticky back velcro strap so you can put one on there onto the back of this and one to the back now you're going to be incredibly like surprised how thin this box is but yet this can fit nine fa no ten fans ten freaking fans what company do you know that can fit ten freaking fans for a control box and comes up with two cables like that Obviously, Sahara, just a note, please use SATA connector rather than the Molex because Molex is slightly thicker and it's about as near enough as thick as this box. Now this box is really thin. This is about a centimetre by two, like at the maximum of like width and it can fit nine fans, 10 fans in there, sorry. So it can fit five fans at the top and then it can fit five fans at the bottom. And then it's got this little uh, DC power and infrared reader. So basically, you stick this somewhere hidden in your computer, and this is where you can use the remote control, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and then you've got a reset switch at the back there, which is pretty cool. And then you've got a fan speed, and then you've got mode, and you've got LED speed. So if you lose the remote control, go into the computer, you can start using these very clicky uh, initiative buttons on the side there. But this is so thin that you can easily. When you look at boxes from other companies, you've got loads of cables coming out everywhere, and then you've got boxes too thick. I've got one fan, and I literally just plug it in like so. So that's how simple it is. One fan, plug it in, plug that into power, and then this other cable just routes around to the remote control. Now, another idea that I would give to Sahara is to make this separate. These cables separate so you can connect them in, but also make this cable a lot longer because this is only gonna be decent for the case that I've got there. And um, to be honest with you, having a longer remote control, you can write it through different ways and then have it hidden in the corner, but in the corner where you can actually use infrared. But yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's the remote control, then you've got the Velcro strap, and they also have like a battery in here as well, which it had um, a little tab over the top so you can 
so the battery didn't die. Now the battery uses a CR2025 battery, so it should give you at least about a year's worth of uh, using a remote control, sometimes a little bit longer with that kind of battery. Anyway, it's got red, um, like a turquoise, orange, like navy blue, yellow, burgundy, green, white, um, the colours might differentiate when I'm actually going through the actual cycle. You've got Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7, Q8. These are different things. Uh, Spectrum fan controller system. That's what it is. A remote control that can do all this stuff. It's really cool. Fan on auto. You can change the fan speed just with the remote control. Don't have to go through the BIOS or do anything like that. Do it all for the remote control. You can turn it off. You can turn it on. You've got LED speed. You've got different modes. You've got hold and you've got plus and minus to go to ramp the volume up or ramp the volume uh, ramp the volume up ramp the speed of the fan up or down uh, to your own like press served like settings and also with the RGB lights as well you can have them fast or slow but we're going to get to all of that anyway um, so I'm just going to push this out to the side and if you think about it yeah this remote control is eight, say it's like seven pound and then you've got like one fan so what's that? That is like 13 quid. Like 13 quid. Um, that's like 20 odd quid. That's nothing for RGB fans. But anyway, let me bring this case in. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? Like, like, the only thing is, I'm going to be honest, but my, my, uh, my uh, one got damaged in transit a little bit. As you can see, the little metal bit. But... I left it up like that. This bit here, they did put a bit of a padding on there, but that didn't get ruined. But the front bit did. But it can easily be bent out and it'll be back to normal. So as this is their first case and first RGB fans, I think they're doing pretty well. So let's get on with this case review. Right, so on the front, you've got tempered glass and it's mirrored. It's mirrored to anything you can literally see yourself in there but also you can see your rgbs in it it's going to look like a nice little design the cameraman's waving he loves it <laughs> then we've got the front as well and i'm sure that is mirrored as well that is so so cool let's skip the because i haven't even taken this apart i've only played with the rgb fans and i'm going to be making a blog on the whole thing because i think it's definitely worth it right so we've got the screws the screws don't even feel cross-threaded they actually feel quite nice so that's that's not too bad. Have they got little bits of padding on the mirror so you don't ruin the mirror? Yep, it's got padding on there. So these are like metal screws. They feel like metal anyway. But they don't feel weighty. Right, so that's cool. We're gonna talk about this in depth. So that feels great quality. Right, so if I hold the glass, does it hold on to it? The glass feels nice. So quality control there, so you ain't gonna break glass. It's funny though, because the glass is slightly tinted into like a, a, a brownish color, but it's mirrored and it looks like a silver white color. It's pretty cool. I like it. So I'm just gonna stick this down the bottom and hopefully I don't break it. Right, so in the case, I'm gonna have to stand up for this one, ain't I? So we'll take off the other side as well. So we haven't, I don't think we've got captive screws on the side. This will be a good idea to put captive screws on the side, but it doesn't feel too tight or anything like that. It feels really nice. Wow, okay, they've gone a little bit, they've gone a step further. They've put an air vent right at the side, at the back. So if you've got any NVMEs or SSDs that are producing a little bit of heat, you can literally make sure everything's exhausted or any heat that's escaping through all these grommet holes or whatever, it's gonna be able to come filtered straight out the back if you want it like that. There's no silence padding or anything like that. The flex test, right, that's me being really aggressive. It's not too bad. It's quite good, decent material. I'm gonna put that down the side here. So, now you can see straight away, we have a, a Stroud here, a PSU Stroud. But what they've done, instead of having it cut out here, like say like thermal, um, not thermal tape, like a fractal design, they've basically sealed it straight over with air vents, but they made it look quite stylish. You can also put a 120 mil fan on the top as well, that way. So if I put it that side. It looks like we don't have enough room on this side, do we? Well, no, we do. All right, cool. I thought it was going to be a really crappy case then for a minute. So you could have like three 120s up here. 
and you can have a 360 at the top if you want. You've got room for a two, um, 240 and a 360 in the front as well, but we're gonna get to that in a minute. Let's just talk about inside here. What I like about this straight away, that they've got all the standoffs as well. So brass standoffs in this case, standard ATX case, that fits in there. You've got a grommet hole up the top here, feels really quite decent, no black coming off I can see on my fingers so decent so grommet holes on the side here so to pass through for your 24 pin and your graphics card cables through your uh, PCI cables uh, EPS connectors fan connectors can go in here looks like you've got uh, fan tire ports on the back here nice cables look nicely wrapped from the front of the IO um, you've got the bit there where you can put your radiator in there no problem looks like you can put a fairly thick one in but we're looking for airflow now airflow looks not so restricted even though it has got a glass part on the front it looks like it's got a lot of airflow from that side as well and we've got airflow on this side as well so they haven't like skimped on just having it stylish or something like that without having airflow now it's still not a lot of airflow but it is airflow from the side and from that side but also there's a lot of airflow as well in the basement and at the top we have a magnetic top as well so you can easily put your free i think it's a 360 up here it might be a 240 actually let's have a look right, so be one two so it's a 240 at the top and you could probably get a 280 in there yeah so 280 and a 240 at the top there and a 360 and a 240 at the top there and a 120 on the back as well so this is where the 120 will be but do you like the fact of how they've done this where you can have the fan up here depends on how your build is so he's got these nice little holes that are just cut out so you can have it breathing and have it very perfect for your airflow You've got uh, PCI slots at the back here, so your standard seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And um, it's got normal Phillips screws that are on here and a little bracket, so you can take that off and then get to the screws. It's not too, too much of a problem. But this is what I like as well. I like the Stroud. I like that you can put a hard drive on there, so you can put a mechanical hard drive and SSD on the front there as well. Um, you've got grommet holes there for pass throughs and making it look nice and stuff like that. If we spin it around, we've got a centimeter and a half of uh, finger width through the back to do nice cable management. You've got the IO, um, well, the retention brackets being cut out so you can easily get to it. And then you've got like these fan, like see these fan cables and nice to be able to plug in. I like how they've done this though. They have not skimped at all. They've got the audio H, uh, the HD audio, the USB 2s and all the front uh, IO connectors for the front and then the USB 3, but it's all nicely wrapped straight to the cable. Nice thin flat, um, flat, nice flint, nice thin flat cables as well. So you can literally just, get away with more cable management. Obviously USB 3 carries more data, so it's gonna be a little bit more different. You can put a mechanical hard drive, so just simple um, mechanical hard drive uh, insert, which is, uh, could put two SSDs in there. They could put two mechanical hard drives in there as well. Looks like you could actually probably put three in there. Probably could put three SSDs in there, but two mechanical hard drives. Shuts really nice and everything like that. And you can put a nice ATX power supply in there, no problem. It's got um, some foam pads as well to stop the vibration. And underneath it does have a filter as well, which is fairly simple to get out, which is here. And it's magnetic as well. But if it's magnetic, why do you need to have these like little catch things? Guess for more safety, I guess. But yeah, it doesn't really need it because it's magnetic. And it doesn't take too long to put back on there anyway. It's already on there. You got these feet as well, these are like foam rubber like inserts so it doesn't scratch the disc and that. Uh, my one's slightly got damage underneath there. I could probably pull that out, but I'm not gonna do that yet. But this is what will come there. So they probably need to work on that and make it a bit more padded up so it doesn't break the feet, or not, not break the feet, but bend them in. But yeah, the whole thing looks really like awesome. I think it looks cool. It looks like um, with cable management, you could route it just underneath um, the like the um, mechanical hard drive 
but it's not like plenty of room for your cables and there's no really plenty of room to actually put it over the top. You could probably get away with some things, but not too much. But it's got enough room for mechanical hard drives to go in and that's pretty cool. On the top of the case, right here we have, what have we got here? RGB button to switch your RGBs. Nice clicky sensation, have to put your finger right in there. You can't just touch it with the tip of your finger. Uh, you've got US, one USB 3, one US, uh, two USB 2s, headphone jack, microphone jack, and then a reset button and a power button and an LED light for indicator for your mechanical hard drives at the top. Um, at the top as well, this doesn't look too bad, where you can put 280 and a 240 um, AIO water cooling unit, or you can put custom water cooling in there. It looks like you can do quite a bit to it. The case is not too heavy when it hasn't got the doors and the glass on. And I'm going to get the front off somehow. It looks like it's going to be quite difficult to get the front off. <laughs> Breaking out, it's well hard to get it off. Time lapse this and put some Benny Hill music on. No, we won't be doing that, mate. <laughs> oh. right, there we go. That's not too bad. I think we'll just get the front off like this. Alright, let's see. So the front should come off like this. Oh, there we go. So with a little bit of a push and a pull, a little bit of a push and pull, does that make sense? So just with, with a little pull, it should work. But anyway, so you can get rip the cables out from the side there. So just be careful, because obviously the cables are connected in here, but they don't look very cheap. They look like they've done pretty well. So, and this is connected to glass. It's got the Sahara logo on there. We'll do a close up on that afterwards. But yeah, this is how you get your radiator in there. Probably better to use like thinner radiators on the actual case itself. So I've just bent the front back in as well. So let me undo this. So we've got the case, we've got to get front um, off and basically you've got the cables. They're nice, decent length, so that's not too bad. These are near enough incredibly hard to like pull the front off but technically if you're lifting the case up from the front you definitely don't want it to come apart do you so yeah it's got a nice little cut out there you can put a radiator on there and all that sort of stuff what i might do though just so i can show you properly how this is put together i'm going to get an aio and i'll probably or just a radiator or something like that and a motherboard and a power and a, yeah a power supply see what that looks like would you add them and leave it? <laughs> you can actually put, look how fat this like radiator is. It's like one, two, three, four, probably about nearly six centimeters in width, but yet it fits in here, no problem on the front. So you can put thick radiators in the front. So that's that, that's that closed off. The radiator is in the front. That is amazing. So let me just pop it off. Ah! So this is a 360 beast mode radiator. Then you put your fans inside the actual case and then having it blow out. Now, if I'm gonna put a radiator that big inside this case, would I have enough airflow in there? Let's have a look. Hmm. Technically, probably, mm, I don't know, probably yeah. You got gaps there. So yeah, you still get airflow. Not a tremendous amount, if, unless you use like a smaller radiator. But it just shows how thick that radiator is. Like literally, as thick as you like. It's like I only need about another four of these radiators, and it's the same width of the front of the case. But anyway, so that's the size of the front of the case, and we'll have a bit more of a nicer look on the front here. As you can see, they went to work. I'm gonna turn it up this way. They went to work on making sure that nothing was like really, like there's some are a bit panicky where uh, the cables can literally come away or break really easily. They've really gone to work and they made it so it's really nice. The glass is decent as well. And then you've got nice little air vents as well, like I said. And you've got a nice little drop out air vent. It's not like super amount, but that's where you grab the actual um, front to get it out. And these like little pop like rivets that click in like plastic ones. They could make this top so you can take the top off and work around the computer. But it is still quite sturdy to honest with you. I'm really going at it and it's pretty sturdy. 
Got a little bit of room in there as well for the bottom, just to probably pass through some cables. Probably about two finger whips. So you've got two finger whips of uh, room on the side of the uh, mechanical hard drive, which is pretty cool. Um, now I'm just gonna turn it around. Well, actually, this will not fit on the side. This is for a 280 and uh, it's a real tight fit. But probably if you change the rate it, you probably could use that, but it goes into the top, no problem. So if I turn it around, you can put a 280 at the top and the holes match up perfectly. And you've still got room for your grommets at the top. So if I move my hand slightly out the way, if I just put it like that. So imagine that you've got one, two, yeah, you've got two grommets at the top, pass your EPS connector right over the top. So you can have your fans, you can pass the EPS connector from probably at the side. So if I put this down from here, can we get the EPS connector in? Yeah, so we could use that slot here to pass the EPS connector through. So they have thought about room as well, which is pretty cool. So that's the 280 at the top. So 280, 240, um, 120 at the back, um, radiator, 120 uh, exhaust fan, 360, two, 80 at the front and 240 at the front then maybe you could put a radiator on the bottom here if you really wanted to but I personally wouldn't but um, yeah let's try a motherboard in there quickly and see what that looks like so I've got the MSI B350 motherboard Tom, Tom Hawk uh, Arctic motherboard I can't even speak properly what is going on alright so if I just grab this out quickly I'm going to check what it looks like so that's what a motherboard will look like in here so that's perfect near enough just a, a millimeter up and then it lines up with the screws but you can see with the EPS connector so you can have the radiator at the top and then you can have the EPS connector and it comes through here and into the 8 pin at the top there all your fan connectors and stuff pass throughs um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. The 24 pin and the USB 3 will be alright. USB 3 is going to be a bit difficult. It's going to be a bit difficult getting it in to one CVR, the USB 3. You could probably get it up and then probably put it in, but it's going to look like folded. But there you go, that's the USB 3 for your normally. All the connectors as well for like the front IO and the USBs and stuff. And you've got USB 3 here as well, depending on your motherboard. You've got all the little cutouts that you can plug in and make it look really tidy. So cable management's not gonna be very much of an issue on the back of here. Nor is getting an EPS connector, that's gonna be pretty decent. Um, and all like the pass throughs here. So you can have one, two, uh, yeah, two, was it, it's either two, is it one, two, so yeah, two SSDs here with the cables passing through. It will look awesome. This case will look really nice. So say I've got a graphics card and it's quite long, the longest it could be, there's a lot of room to put the biggest graphics card in here. And all water cooling is gonna be not a problem in here as well. As you've got the RGB fans here and tubing, you can literally make an easy connection and your pump, where would you put your pump though? I suppose you could put your pump and reservoir here and then the SSDs are still behind. If you've got NVMEs, it'll be all right as well. And then you've got your exhaust fan on the back there, so. Let's see if you've got enough room there. So let's just put the fan on the top. So I can go right up to the top, right to the bottom. This is good because when you put a radiator on there, the radiator is gonna fit on there no problem whatsoever because it's got loads of little slots where you can actually plug it in. On the front as well, I've just noticed that it's got pads as well for the glass to make sure it hangs on there nice and tight. Okay, so it's good. They've taken ideas from other people or they've done their homework and they've literally put a great case together. They've made it accessible, new and up to date. The only thing is, it hasn't got type C on it, but it's only like the first case they've built in that, so I don't know. I just think it's like pretty cool. And they've got a nice little Stroud, they haven't got no shouty like logo on there, but the logo is embedded in the glass, but it's like a little tiny bit, we'll have a closer look at all of that sort of stuff. At the end of this video, I'm gonna put um, all like what the fans look like, so you can see every single color, uh, because if I put it through the review, it's going to look really long. But basically, every single thing you can do with a remote control and these lights is going to be at the end of this video. They'll probably do updates. I don't know whether you need to go online and do updates or anything like that. But at the moment, it's remote control and it's awesome. But we're going to get to that 
part in a minute. I know this video is really long, but it's in depth as much as possible as I can talk about this case. It's pretty good. It's a fair, it's a fair one. So let me take this motherboard out and I'm gonna try and show you the power supply in there. I've got a small power supply and I've got a normal size power supply. So you can make your own decision up. So now I'm going to turn this case around to the side there, they come around to the front. I know you guys don't like all this stuff, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right, so this is a mini ITX, not mini ITX, well yeah, I suppose a mini ITX power supply, or what is it called, SFX, uh, SFX power supply. So this is what a tiny power supply would look like in there, which will give you a lot more room for cables to go in there and make it lighter. I don't know whether you saw that actually, I'll, I'll put it back in there just so in case you can see it. So it would be around here, cables all inside, we can route it all the way through and all that. Now let's show you what a normal power supply looks like. This is what a normal standard ATX power supply looks like. Now I'll put it in right. So that's exactly where it would sit, uh, be seated, seated. And as you can see, the cable management is not too bad. And you can wrap obviously the cables through. If you spend a bit more time with this case, spend more, you can find out where you want to put stuff. But as you can see, I can hide most of these cases, um, cables, to EP, uh, yeah, EPS connector at the top there, and I can feed it around the back there. Do you see what I mean? It's, it's really quite awesome. If you've got custom cables, you're gonna be laughing. But anyway, it does fit pretty well. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, but it's all right. Right, let's move on to showing you the RGB lights on this case. Then. So what I like about these fans is it's got true white in it and we're going to get to that in a moment. We're just going to cycle through a few little plain things. It's like kind of daylight where you're looking at at the moment. The other uh, videos are going to be right at the end. It's going to show you everything and also there's going to be a little website and how to connect things up if you don't know how to do it. But we're going to go through everything on just on the remote control and on the controller itself. So we got yellow. Oh, hang on. We did have yellow. There we go, I didn't press it probably. Yellow, then Bergen. No, it's not even Bergen, it's purple. What is going on my eyesight? Green, and then true white. Are you are you kidding me? There's no other company that I've seen with true white colours yet. But anyway, you got that, and then you got fan auto. And then turn off fan auto. And then you can speed it up. You can do the LEDs as well. Oh, do you know what? I'm not even 
pressing the right thing on that thing. Here we go. That's faster. Slow down. Faster. Slow down. See, there's hardly anything. LEDs, um, let's, where else do we need to go to? Mode. So we've got all of these modes, yeah. I know, I know, you tell me about it, it's cool. Um, we can, uh, can we speed it up? LED speed, so that's, is that slow? It's really slow. That is mad, they're all going all over the place. Really slow. Fast, look at that. Right, now let's go to a different mode. So you can have it in different colours. I feel like just so I just want white. I don't feel I can do it with that. Let me have a look. Can go for all the colours. Okay. Da -na 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 -na. Oh wow! St. Patrick's Day. No, that's a rubbish accent. Yeah, hey, it was St. Patrick's Day, and I was drinking a little kind of bread, a bit of Guinness, and it's all really good. And the green and the white, the white and the green in colours, and only the other, other fans. Look really good. Grab a girl and grab it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that does that. Oh, what we got here? Red and white. What is that, Scottish? Scottish. And look at that. Come on. Are you awesome, or are you awesome? Come on. Where are we going? What's that? Then we've got to fade into different colours. Love it. Look at that. Oh my god. Let's slow this down because you can slow it down. Oh, it's like in slow motion. Speed it up a little bit. Oh no, it's slowing it down even more. Slow it down even more. Oh, <laughs> that is cool. What's hold do? Oh no, you didn't do it. No, you can hold the colour. You know, that is amazing. I didn't even know you could do that. So you can hold, I'll have two light blue ones there. So say you had a red that's like 480. You can have like the colour like holding on there and mixing into the next colour. Or you could be like, you know what? I fancy just having half of that and then blue there. Oh my God, sick. Look at that. This is my new one, the hold, the hold button. Anyway, um, what else we got? Can we hold through different colours? I want to hold on there. Oh my god, you can hold it as well on the colour. Right, keep going. I'm going to hold it on that colour, because I like it. Do you know what? I want it to be purple, so let's cycle through to the colour. Well, that's a really... In Intensive green, turquoise. That is cool. Right, here we go. Purple's coming. And I like that colour. And that's the colour I want. No, nope. I'm going to go a little bit more. Yeah, that's the one. That is awesome. Let's go. Let's do something else. Can I hold it here? Oh, my God. <laughs> You're taking the mick, aren't you? That is so cool. Right, oh, let's hold it. <laughs> I don't want it like that though, I want it straight. Where's, oh no, I need to synchronize it. But it doesn't matter, it looks good. Bang, we'll have it like that. No, we won't, we'll change it. This is so cool. What else can you do with it? Q1. What's that do? That does that. Q2 does that. What is that? Is that like a fade in and out? Cool, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's speed that up. Uh, Q3. What? Oh my god. Okay, that's pretty cool. Then you get a little glimpse of that. Uh, Q4, what's Q4 do? <laughs> what? Oh, that's pretty amazing. Q5? Okay, RGB madness, just doing whatever they want. So that's got white and purple. That's got white and purple. Hang on a minute. 
green and oh it's going away whoa that's cool q6 i like that that is my favorite that is sick q7 excellent q8 oh <laughs> bad we can slow it down as well and speed it up oh my god Hold it, let's go. Hold it. Oh, hang on. Uh, what do I want it on? Red and blue, can I get it? Hold it, no, hold it, oh, hold it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that is sick, that is sick. Anyway, people that don't like RGBs, humbug to you as well. There you go, I turned it off for you. But anyway, <laughs> the pressure of the fans are, are decent. Let's uh, speed it up a little bit. That's slowed down. That's like off. I've turned them off. I didn't know I can turn them off. Right, let's speed it up. Yeah. That is cool. Yes. What can we use this paper? Whoa. So it's definitely got some pressure to it, definitely. So if I turn it off again. Turn it on. Oh. And turn it up. Yes, excellent. Ah, oh. right now one more. We're not using remote control because if you forget your remote control, how are you going to control this? I wonder if you can control it from here. Fan speed. Yeah, I don't know if my arm's in the way. Let's put the RGBs on. Oh yes, so I can control it without even using the remote control. What's this? What the hell is this? What was that? Okay, another function I didn't even know it can do. Okay. Oh, okay, like, this is cool. How do we get any other things going on? Oh, that does that. What's that? Fan speed, LED speed. Oh my god. That's cool, you, so you can use the controller as well if you lose that in the battery. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this review, this long, 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 long review. Uh, subscribe, share and all that sort of stuff. Any questions, it will be probably in my little blog and you can ask questions down in the description or comment area, I don't mind. Um, I'm gonna place it on the screen again where to buy this uh, product from and also it'll be in the link in the description down below anyway thumbs up and i'll see you next one thanks for watching